Planning to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond? Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479-980. 8483 or 6359906. Are you thinking of owning your dream homes? EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms, or our story buildings, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate, where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 32592200. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Kerfatu Live. I am Lamin Chan. Thank you very much once again 
for keeping faith with us and following us from wherever you may be. This week, a special program on the Gambia's participation in the African, the African Nations Cup, which takes place in Cameroon, beginning on the 9th, which is, of course, tomorrow, I guess, um, in four venues across uh, that country. We will talk about all this, of course, using the Gambian angle to see how the event, which starts from Sunday right down to middle of February, will pan for our country among 23 others. We have all the information as to the preparations, and we will catch the latest in Cameroon. That is, we'll catch up with our team in Cameroon later in this program. Now, with me in the studio to do justice to this special edition on our participation, the very first time in the Cup of Nations is who else? Papsen. Papsen is the co-founder and director and publisher of the Point newspaper, and he served also as media officer for CAF, notably in the, 20, in the 2000 edition of the competition which was hosted in Ghana and Nigeria jointly that year. Pap traveled to many, many, many major sporting events, including the World Cup, the Olympic Games, and of course, many African Cup of Nations. Of course, Zone 2 as well. So, and he has been in the scene now for the last 40 years or so. 50. 50 years, to be exact. So, Pap, welcome to the branch. Uh, thank you, Lomi. You know what makes this special program more interesting is that it's the first time we are, as Gambians, are taking part in this competition. Mm -hmm. Of course, this has made everybody excited, but then, of course, there have been so many other issues that people commented about that probably may not be as expected. We will come to all that, but first, Pap, let's go back and give the people the gist of the African Nations Cup, its importance, its history, and Gambia's participation up to today. Uh, thank you, Lamin. You give me a heavy task, but I will try. Inshallah. Um, <laughs> viewers, listeners, uh, I greet you. I am Papsen, co publisher of The Point, and I'm very happy to be your guest of honor today. Thank you, Pap. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, the African Cup of Nations started uh, 1957 in Sudan. Khartoum. Yes, with three teams. That year, you have uh, how to call it: uh, Sudan, Egypt, uh, and Ethiopia. Yeah. And e Ethiopia and Egypt went to final. E uh, Egypt uh, won the trophy for the first time by defeating uh, Ethiopia for nil. So Egypt is the first ever champion. Yes, you know they won the trophy seven times seven now. Times. Yes, I will come to that. I will okay. come to that. Uh, after 57, 1963, you have five. Uh, you have six teams. So three more uh, added. Yes, when it was hosted in Ghana. That was during Kuruma's time. Yes. Uh, well, before. Well, Kuruma's yes. Yeah, Kuruma's time. Yes. Uh, 1963. Then after, you have 1968 in Kinshasa. So there was a period. Within that time, 63 to 68, is it? Or yes, it was yes. No, no, no. What I'm saying, I'm giving you the increment. Okay. Or the way the teams were expanded. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, 57, three yeah. teams. Six teams. Uh, 63, six teams. Yeah. 68, uh -huh. eight teams. That was held where? 68. Yeah. Uh, in Kinshasa. Oh, in Congo? In Congo. That's Mobutu's time. Yes. <laughs> so, 68. Then, uh, 92. In Senegal, Senegal, 12 teams. Kirk, yeah, Senegal, we know. Yes. Kirk said Nine, Senegal, yeah. Kirk of yeah. <laughs> 92, Senegal, mm -hmm. 12 teams. And uh, 1996, in South Africa, 16 teams. Yes, I remember that. Yes. Uh, it was in Egypt, 2019, that te teams increased to 24. That's this, right. this 
this was this to give is how opportunity. it evolved to be yeah. 24 teams now. Yes. You know, Africa, you have 35 teams. Exactly. And uh, it's the 33rd edition. Edition now. Uh, in the 33rd ter edition, uh, you have 14 Africans who won the trophy. 14? 14. 14 countries won. Yeah, yeah, so far. Oh, uh, so it's not evenly divided. Right? Yeah, no. We have 53 countries in Africa now, isn't it? 55. 55, but only 14. Yes. So that means so there is For example, uh, you have Egypt seven yeah. times, mm -hmm. you have Cameroon five times, yeah. Ghana four times, mm -hmm. Nigeria three times, mm -hmm. uh, Cote d'Ivoire two times, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, Algeria mm -hmm. two times, you have uh, Congo, Kinshasa, mm -hmm. and now they are Congo uh, two times. Mm -hmm. uh, Seven countries won it once, yeah, they like won. Morocco, mm -hmm. Sudan, Zambia, uh, Zambia, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Congo Brazza, mm -hmm. uh, South Africa. South Africa. Yeah, all they won once. So I mean, fourteen different countries won it. Yes. Some of them a number of times. Yes. Okay. But seven once. <laughs> seven of them once. Yes. But the others a number of times. Yes. Well, you know. Uh, maybe t t uh, this in this in, the in this edition we may have a 15th mm. country, 15th mm. different country. Mm. Uh, we may have it may go to 15 now. Maybe one country who have never won it yeah. will come, but that's difficult. Now uh, very, 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 very difficult. Very. It's, so it's, it's almost always expected that the winner will come out from these 14 again. Uh, maybe, <laughs> but it can't be different. Gambia is there, so we might yeah, Gambia, <laughs> Gambia, they are novices. Okay, but uh, we pray for them. Okay, how Go had Gambia's on. attitude or approach had been in this tournament? Well, uh, let me tell you. Because when we were growing up, okay, mm. we're very familiar with the zone too. Mm. We, of course, in, you know, in the last 20 years or so, I've been involved, when I was around, I'm involved in every mm. Cup of Nations qualifiers, but mm. we have never qualified until this year. How have well, been? Well, uh, first of all, we joined very late. The competition, mm -hmm. as I said to you, the competition started 1957, mm -hmm. but Gambia only registered 1975. Wow! So yeah. that means a whole nearly yes 20 years yeah. or so have passed. Yes, part. 1975, the time of MC Cham. It was MC president Cham was yeah. the president, yeah. oh. and uh, for our first match was against Morocco, and the. Uh, coaches, uh, the national coach was Cherno Touré. Cherno Baratouré. Yes, assisted by Babu So. Yeah, the late Babu So. Yes, and the players, most of them, we are from Real de Banjul. Oh, really? Most Banjul. of them, most of them. I will yeah. tell you. Yeah, you have Sega Job, uh, uh, who was Walidan. Yeah. You have Keba Mansani Shise, who was oh, Real. Goalkeeper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who assisted Sega Job. Yeah. You had um, Tafa Conte, mm -hmm. Komi Oims, yes. Gaba Toure. Gaba Toure, yes. Sheikh Hussar was the captain. Captain. Uh, Saab Sibi. Yes. Uh, Ibu Juf. You said Ibu Juf? Yeah, yes, Ibu Juf. All of them. Yeah. Uh, also, you have uh, Ndaunjai. Yes. You have Biri, Ibu Fayelimba. Yes. Uh, the list goes, goes on. Yeah, so, so, so those were so the people who, who, play, who first fest, played, yeah. who first played the Cup of Nations yeah. qualifiers. I'm sure that you would ask me why my friend uh, Mas Aksigay. Aksigay, yes. That year yeah. he was in Ghana. <laughs> he was in Ghana. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. That year he was in Ghana in Comanche. I okay. think uh, he will agree with me because uh, he knows that I'm good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, for remembrance. <laughs> so subsequently, 75, we joined. That was that must be for the Cup of Nations of 76 or 78? Uh, yeah, 76. For the 76. Morocco. In Morocco. You know, Morocco yeah. uh, won the trophy for the first time that year. 76. But that time, it was a league mm. tournament. It league. Was, it was like a league. Yeah, it was a league tournament. In format, yes. Yeah, in a format uh, in Ethiopia. But... Uh, Morocco was champion, mm -hmm. and uh, Ronald uh, Ronald Zop was uh, uh, Guinea Conakry. Yes. yes. Now um, coming to the stages, mm -hmm. I said to you, we played seventy-five. Yeah. But 
after 75, mm -hmm. you know, the f uh, let me recall you the results. Exactly. Uh, three nil in Panjul mm -hmm. and three nil in Rabat. Wow. It was against Morocco. Wow, they were After that legs. tournament, mm -hmm. after our first appearance in the African, uh, African Cup of Nations, mm -hmm. we came back only in 1980. Oh, so we did not participate from the 76 qualifiers no. until the 1980 he qualifiers. Okay. From 1980 to That's 80 happened in Nigeria, is it? Uh, yes. In Nigeria. Yeah. 1980 mm -hmm. to 88, mm -hmm. we participated. In almost all the qualifiers. Yes. Yeah. But 1990, mm -hmm. we withdrew. We withdrew. 92, yeah. we registered, uh, but after, because of financial problem, we also withdrew. we withdrew. 96 we withdrew yeah. uh, year 2000 we withdrew yeah. all this because of financial, financial difficulties yes, 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 yes. it's only mm -hmm. after 2002 mm -hmm. to 2019 yeah. we, we are more regular a regular in qualifying yeah, in, in qualifying in, 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 in play, playing the qualifiers yes I see. Uh, the boys they made a history mm -hmm. for the first time it was our prayers it was our dreams to have Gambia for the first time African Cup of Nations. Yeah. I fully, I fully remember many times. Biri used to tell me, "Pap, I always pray to play well, to do my best with my compatriots, mm -hmm. to play at least for the African Cup of Nations." Yes. So may his soul rest, rest in perfect peace. Yeah, I was coming there because mm. you know he had always wanted mm. Gambia to participate yes, in the Cup of Nations, yes, and yes. you know, and sadly, even, but even myself, yeah. because uh, as you rightly said, mm, I, I was media official not only for the Confederation of African Football, mm. but I was also media officer of uh, the Gambia Football Association. Yes. yes. I was first appointed by MC Cham. Mm -hmm. MC Cham, the time he was the, the football president. Yes, yeah. he, he he had the foresight mm -hmm. because uh, that time uh, the federations don't, don't have media officers. Mm -hmm. Well before FIFA, you know FIFA, it was uh, in year two thousand mm -hmm. imposed that all the federation must employ media officials in their federation I year see. 2000 or what yes but before that mc cham had the clue eye yes. to make sure yes. uh, that yeah that's uh, always a press officer uh, yeah, yes and i used to travel many times Sounds with the team. national team yeah. uh, at the time uh, i used to send my reports by telex telex yes telegram tele that time. no no telex telex, yeah. telex. Okay. i used to send telex my story to Radio Gambia, Newsroom, yeah, news to, to have uh, in a nutshell the stories. Yeah, but that was uh, interesting. The first uh, commentary that uh, we did oversight mm -hmm. with my boss, my friend Son Jai, yeah. was in '79 when Gambia played in the 12 bar trophy. Oh, and went to final with the Liberia. Yes, Liberia, and yes. Liberia won uh, one nil. Mm -hmm. So now. Um, let me tell you that the competition is very lucrative mm -hmm. right now yeah. all the participating participating team should get uh, four hundred seventy five thousand dollars four hundred and seventy five thousand uh, dollars yes every participating team yes we never had yes. gff or nc talk about that uh, <laughs> four hundred and seventy five thousand Dollars. Yeah, dollars. That's what each participant can yes, earn. Yes. Yes. Nobody's talking about that. Yes, but uh, uh, let me okay. divulge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let yeah, me yes. Let me disclose. We'll, I'm sure we'll pick this up. We have to ask the officials yeah, yes. where is this money? Yes. If it has been given. Yes. Uh, then, when you win the trophy, it's five million dollars. If you dollars, win it, you get five million dollars. Yes. For for this competition. For this competition. 2021. Uh, uh, First run-up, three million dollars. Three million dollars. Yes. Okay. Semi-finalists. Yeah. Two point five million dollars. Two five five million dollars. So. Quarter finalists. Yeah. Eight hundred thousand dollars. So that means at least if we reach, that's where the money price stops. Yes. What happened is, yeah. uh, is two TV rights. Yes, of course, still television. That 
that they generate money from. Yes. Marketing of. Uh, but TV rights very very expensive. Yeah. Small countries in Africa like Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, and all those, they charge them at least for the tournament three hundred thousand dollars. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. Three hundred thousand dollars to broadcast. To, 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 to be, if for your, not for your national t TV yeah. to broadcast. Yes. If not, uh, if you pirate it or whatever. Yes. You can you, find. You, you will be fired. Yeah. So it's too, that's, where, that's how the money is generated. Yes. For example, a country like us, of course we know Gambia, we would like our national television to broadcast. Yes, so million the dollars. government or the ministry or the TV will pay $300,000. Yes. That's a lot of money. Yes, that's of money. And that's what they pay to get the rights. Yes. Yeah, it's a so small country. But Nigeria, Senegal, they will pay bigger. Yes. Because they have more. They have more audience. Yes. 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 That's why. So, okay, if we are getting $475,000 just mm. for participating, mm. which is a lot of money, millions yes. and millions of yes. dollars. Yes, well. Yes. We, we, we have not had anybody talk about that yet. Mm. <laughs> because we know, mm. of course, CAF give support, preparatory support. Of course, support of course, that. and FIFA too. And FIFA too. Yeah. So, mm. Well, we haven't had, you know, GFF, uh, perhaps we will get them to talk about that uh, towards. But let's, this one, mm. uh, Pap, um, mm. Because we have some clips from our veterans about their opinion. But this one, Pap, how do you see this one? Because it comes one at a time when we had at Cameroon, one, they may not be ready or the facilities may not be correct. Secondly, we had that, you know, the Anglophone part of Cameroon, you, yes. know, you know, they are engaged in well, rebellion. rebellion. Mm -hmm. They want to go separate ways. Yes. And the Gambia is. You know, in a group that is based in Buea Town, mm. with the stadium in Limbe. Limbe. Only a few days ago, we had that. Uh, the last place, week. Last week might not be safe. New mm. experience. Uh, we had something like uh, this in Togo, uh, rather in Gab in Angola, mm. involving the Togolese team. We hope not this time. But do you think the Cameroonian authorities are right when they insist that they do not see and they do not expect any problem at all? even in this part of the country, which is supposed to be in turmoil. You know, governments will always yeah. deny that there is yeah. disability or instability. Mm. But are you not uh, worried? I'm worried in a sense, for security reasons, it was not safe really for our boys mm -hmm. to be in that area. Mm -hmm. Because the rebellion, those people, they said they will sabotage the African Confederation. And CAF, they took note of it. Well, let's pray for peace. But really, I'm afraid with these uh, uh, rebels uh, to try to sabotage the nation cop. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, and, 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 and you know, but they said they hold the, the you know, the, the CHAN, that is the local mm. Africa Cup of Nations, yes. was held there without yeah. any problem. Yeah. So the Cameroonian authorities believe that. Mm. Uh, they can, they, are, they can still hold this big tournament without, they don't expect any problems. But this one, uh -huh. but this one, uh -huh. uh, they, they did a threat yeah. saying uh -huh. that they will sabotage the nation cup. Yeah. Because it's a big tournament uh -huh. and many people will come to witness the occasion. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, the security people, yeah will be allowed to do, do everything possible to make sure yeah. that our people are well protected. Okay. Yes. Coming uh, back to the group. Yes. Yep. I'm sure yep. that uh, you want to That's have what a, I wanted now. Yes, I know. I, mean, <laughs> I know that you want to have an idea. So we have Tunisia. Mauritania. We have Mauritania. Yes. We have Mali. Yes. How uh, do you uh, fancy our chance against Mauritania, for example? Because they are the first we will, we will get. Uh, let me tell you my honest opinion mm -hmm. and my experience. Yes. Although we are all nationals. Yes. But uh, when we come to the profession, we should not compromise it. Absolutely. We, we, should, should, we should be able to be objective. objective. That, that's, what the, that's what will benefit our viewers. Yes. <laughs> what happened is Mauritania, mm -hmm. they participated in the finance mm -hmm. of the African Cup of Nations twice. Mm -hmm. uh, Mali, 12 times. Mm -hmm. Tunisia, 20 times. Mm -hmm. Mali went to final 72 mm -hmm. and uh, they lost mm -hmm. uh, against Congo Brazza 3-2. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm, 
It was in Cameroon. Yeah. It was in Cameroon that uh, yes. they went to uh, final and uh, lost the final, became yeah. the first run-up. Uh, Tunisia also, they only won, they only won, uh, only uh, won, uh, they only won the trophy once yeah. in 2004. Yeah. But that was uh, held in their yeah, in their country. country. I was there. It's you were there. You covered it, it. Yeah, it was my last coverage, of coverage of African Convention because yeah. I have covered African uh, African Convention mm -hmm. sixteen times on World Cup three times. It was my last. Uh, coverage of African Covenant Nation. Okay. Uh, so as, uh, what I'm saying... So let's talk about Mauritania. You know, in the Zone 2, when mm. I was small and we used to mm. take part in mm. the Zone 2, mm. we, we used to do very well, uh, you know, yes, against course, Mauritania. Yes. So, uh, I mean, of course we had, we had that, uh, recently we had matches between us, I know. Mm. But uh, how do you rate them against Gambia? Uh, wh what I'm saying... Uh, through experience of the tournament, yes, they got more experience in the tournament exactly. because they participated, they participated twice. Before, yes. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I said to you, Gambia is novice. Uh, uh, Gambia is definitely the least fancied in that group. Yeah, it's novice yeah. in the tournament because yeah. they, it's the first time. First time. Oh well, yeah, Mali. I told you, Mali, twelve times. Uh, I went to the competition. So and you, you are virtually telling me when it comes to, uh, I mean. Uh, Pedigree, history, uh, uh, and paper quality, and pen, perhaps, and paper preparation and pen, too. People and pen. Yeah, and Our experience. Our chances are meager, but mm. we should not go there as a tourist. I see. We should go, fight, try our chances believe to ourselves. make to believe ourselves mm. that we can make it. Yeah. We will not say to ourselves mm. that uh, we are novice. Is the first time that we are doing that. No, mm. they should go there to fight total need yeah. to make sure that uh, they will defend the, uh, the colors of the country. The, the flag. All right. At this point, we will uh, cross over to get the opinion of some of Gambia's actually f some of Gambia's uh, legendary players who have played in these qualifiers, but they have never reached um, this Cup of Nations. They have never had an opportunity. So we have quite a few of them line up, um, you know, to share their thoughts with us. And uh, I will cross over to our technical team. Can we have? As his core, as his core, you know, as he's very well. Very so, well. He's yes. my brother. We <laughs> live together uh, at first at Gloucester. Gloucester Street. <laughs> as his core, I played for the Gambia, you know, at high level. He was a sensational mm. uh, striker at the time. Yeah, I know. Uh, he was at the president's farewell dinner, um, mm. you know, a few, uh, two days, two nights ago, mm. when the flag was being given. So we caught up with him, and this is what uh, he had to say about the uh, Cup of Nations and our appearance. Okay. Uh, could you please introduce yourself? Um, my name is Aziz Kaur, ex-national um, team player. Actually, I, play, I started playing for the national team 1982 yes, till uh, uh, till uh, 1997. That's quite a yes, long, sir. you know, years of representing, you know. No, actually, the I played with different generations in the national team. You know? And then it's an it was it's an honor to play for the national team. How do you feel, you know, the day you receive, you know, information that Gambia qualified for Afcon for the first time in in the country's history? You know what? I I was proud like every other Gambia. And I think all the Gambians that love this country should be proud of these boys, what they did. You know. and, um, we all have to support them. That, uh, I wish that they reach the finals or even win the, win the tournament. Because the, that would be a history. You know, because I think that these boys, they need, they need our support. And we should give them our support. And I hope they will do it. I hope. You know, and I pray to God that they win it. Uh, as a veteran, what advice do you have for these young lads going to represent Gambia? Um, I just want them to be themselves. Um, just concentrate and uh, believe in themselves. If they believe in themselves, they will, they, will, they will make it. They will win the tournament. 
That's what I believe. Okay. Uh, As you score a former Gambia international there talking to our reporter Landing Sise at uh, the farewell party hosted by President Adam Obaro. Pap, you were not at that meeting, but you heard that the funding gap, $90 million that the National Coordination Committee was looking for, uh, was filled by a massive $90 million donation by the Gambia government. Uh, how do you react when you heard that? Uh, it was a big boost. I, uh, I should commend uh, uh, President Barrow for the love, the passion that he have, uh, that he has on sports. Because we know that uh, he's a football fan. He likes sports, and uh, for the first time in the history of the Gambia, uh, players got the opportunity to have chartered flights. Uh, because uh, if you could remember, I used to travel with the national team. Mm -hmm. To travel, you take a uh, truck or Land Rovers to travel, <laughs> very hard. Yeah. And secondly, uh, in 79, when Gambia went to final and came, every player received that time 100 dollars. Only 100 dollars? 100 dollars. As allowance? Yeah, uh, for the final, to read the, the final. final, to read the final. <laughs> but yeah. the 100 dollars was... Yes. Well, some money on that. Uh, yeah, that yeah. Too. No, just to explain you. Yeah. So really, a big thanks to Barrow's government for stepping in in sports because me, I believe in sport. I like sports. I know. So I should comment him about uh, uh, this uh, good job that uh, he has done with his uh, uh, cabinet to make sure that uh, things are all right. You know, football is very, very expensive. Is why even. CAF or FIFA, they assist uh, the teams to have better preparation to lodge in good standing hotels. Uh, CAF knows very well that uh, African government, they will give money mm -hmm. uh, and give uh, incentive yeah. to their players. Exactly. But despite that, yeah. they will contribute also for their preparation. preparation. That's why that uh, every team will receive four hundred seventy-five thousand yeah. dollars because uh, every match you have bonuses, you have some commitments with the players. Exactly. Yes, thank you very much. So the ninety million actually is, 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 is I mean, I mean, according to the organizing committee, the coordination committee, this money is going to one. You talk about hiring of aeroplanes. Yes. The GFF uh, or the national coordination committee hired this plane to take players from Qatar where they intended to have... It's what I'm saying. It's very expensive. It's what I'm saying. Brought them to Banjul and it's now take them to Cameroon. Yes. And other officials and supporters mm. will be traveling on Monday also from here mm. on the same flight and then we'll bring them back. So that's plus allowances, bonuses, you know, as they go, you know, in the tournament as, as some of the um, expenditures expected from this money. So a good initiative. Okay, let's go back to the dinner and here once more i'm sure you know of course <laughs> all these veterans having traveled with them and work with them when they were in the national team um you know masks alaji mas aksege alaji mas aksege <laughs> you talk about him um he was coach player and coach actually uh, mm -hmm. for the national team Ma alaji mas aksege was at the dinner and uh, landing sister caught up with him and asked him about his thoughts on the Gambia's participation in the Africa Cup of Nations. Let's hear what he had to say. Please introduce yourself to us. I am Alhaji Mas Aksigai. You call me Honorable or you call me Excellence? I was a minister. I was an ambassador. Ambassadors are Excellence. Ministers are Honorable. And I've tested all. Okay, um, how do you feel about the Gambia's qualification to the AFCON? Very excited here yeah, because, I mean, I have seen a lot of my young players who played under me as their coach. I was the coach of the national team. They played under me, most of them, in club, in national team football. I'm seeing most of them here tonight. That, that, that It's not only about our qualification, but bringing the old ones here is an issue. What is your wish for the national team? Of course, I wish them to do well because, I mean, I mean they, they are going amongst their peers. Of course, I mean, what we will expect from them is to, to, to do a very sound performance as a newcomer in this tournament. We might not expect all, or at least for a very good performance 
for the first time of the Gambia in football history, I think that's what we are looking for. And um, inviting the veterans to come and grace such occasion like this has not been the tradition in this country. It has been happening everywhere, but for Gambia it has not been happening. But now it has started because for the first time we've got our qualification, so we need the parting of the president with our footballers. And we were invited because, I mean, <laughs> we started the ball rolling long since. They are endowed with the luck of being the first qualified ones. But I will tell you, we have good ones behind them. Please introduce yourself to us. I am Alhaji Mas Aksigai. Landing, she said, talking to Alhaji Mas Aksigai, who himself said it. <laughs> he saw it all. He played, he coached, and he you know, also served in public administration. He was sports minister and ambassador. You remember Mars Aksigay Pap when he was involved uh, when in his active years with the national team. How influential was he? Well, Mars, I know him very well. <laughs> yes. Uh, he's my childhood friend. He's my elder brother. Okay. We did everything together. Uh, he's a good citizen mm -hmm. who loves his country, who loves sports. Is why that uh, today is among the technicians that. We can rely on their experience, their advices. We need elderly people like him to coach the boys uh, in different manners, uh, in sporting events, in cultures, and everything. He and uh, Chelo Ture, they play a vital role yeah. uh, to promote football in the Gambia. They should not be forgotten. Mm -hmm. They have played their role, and up to now, uh, they did everything possible to make sure football is uh, going higher high in the Gambia. He, 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 he also was sports minister, you remember? Uh, yes, of course. Brimble. Yes. And an ambassador. When he was sports minister, I think, um, um, you know, it, it, that was hailed and commended, you know. Um, the government of President Jammeh then was commended for bringing in sports people, real sports people, mm. to become minister. minister. And mm. I advocate, you know, all along I was advocating mm. that uh, people who are, who are knowledgeable in sport mm -hmm. should be uh, appointed uh, as minister, as permanent secretaries, because those people, they know the game. Exactly. In many countries, yes. you must have an idea about sports, love the sport, practice the sports. But um, here in the Gambia, the system has changed. Yes. Yes. Nobody, um, they, I mean, they just bring somebody who, <laughs> who is just a public administrator. Yes, and, yes. And, and it's an area where you need technocrats. Yes. You need people who have seen it, played yes, it. Yeah, of course. So Max Axigay's appointment at the time was held, I remember. Yes, of course. Uh, as one of the, I mean, the very first time that uh, when the ministry was created in 92, you remember. Mm. Uh, mm. Uba Balde was there. Yes, yes, yes. Uba was, well, Jawar at, like, at, at that time wanted somebody who was youthful, mm -hmm. you know, who was a youth. Mm. Buba was. But, you know, he, he, he naturally didn't have any practical sporting experience himself because he never played any sports himself, Buba. But, you know, subsequently when Mars came, you know, when the military boys came, of course, Yankuba Ture was. Mm. Yankuba played football amateurly, perhaps. M. Sajo Ture, I mean, a file, we are all in there. But, you know, all, none of these people actually matured, or, you know, in sports as their, as their career. Mm -hmm. But Max actually gave all, so people said that was a good move. But after, along the way, we, we you know, we, the, gov the su succeeding gov successive governments went back to appoint people who probably have no connection in sports. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I mean, things like that. What would you be, would be your advice still? Well, uh, the ministry should be handled by technicians, those knowledgeable, not, uh, yes. those very knowledgeable in sports, yes. who like sports, who knows sports, uh, who live in sports. sports. Yeah. And the uh, uh, what we expect from them will go on. Yeah. Like, like, like uh, uh, you will allow me to say something. 
We cannot talk about football in the Gambia. Forget those who contributed immensely yes. for the development of football. Mm -hmm. You know, it was only year 2000 that FIFA uh, gave contribution yeah. to the federations FIFA to support them. Now called but FIFA before FIFA. that, yeah. here in the Gambia, some people sacrificed their life. Uh, Mugaging, yes. mugaging their properties in the banks. Alaji Obi Konate, let us say Nunjai. Alaji Gabi Sose. All those people, mm -hmm. they sacrifice for the football. Uh, we, uh, we thank also Mamadou Kadi Cham. Who, yes, who, uh, who I told you during his ten tenure, yeah. we first participated in the African Cup of Nations. Yeah. Late Fangom. Uh, Gabi Sose and others, they have contributed uh, a lot. Bio uh, Fofana, yeah. all these uh, former president, uh, Dr. Samba and others, yes. George Gomez, yes. all they participated. Usman Silla. Uh, Usman Silla. Yeah. They participated for the national team. But kudos to late Obi Konate and uh, Alaji Seninjai, yeah. who sacrificed their life, their assets, mm -hmm. and Alaji Gabi Sose. Uh, to make sure that football uh, in the Gambia will go on. So in a day like today, even though most of those, people, well, some are alive, so yes, uh, a number of them have passed away. Yes. It was always good to remember them. Yes. Yeah, because like you said, until uh, Sheikh Balata became president, yes. there wasn't anything like FIFA. Mm. No, so no, no, no. Now known as FIFA Forward. Yes. I mean, all you, you just imagine that time when there was no money. No money. You know, and, and, and Gambia was able to participate in, in all these competitions. Yes. Now there's FIFA, you know, a lot of people used to say, <laughs> millions. I mean, millions are pouring <laughs> in now. <laughs> can, all right, let's cross up back to the dinner again. We have uh, the voice of um, Sheikh Nur. You remember him, Sheikh Nur? Very well. Very he's well. A good, he's um, a good friend of mine. He, he was among the veterans too at the dinner. And uh, let's cross to our technicians after and have Sandur and you know hear what he had to say. Um, could you uh, introduce yourself to us? I'm Sheikh Ndur, um, veteran footballer, um, commonly known as Schoolboy International. Okay. Um, how do you feel about Gambia's you know qualification to the Afcon for the first time in the country's history? Um, to me, it's a special uh, feeling. One to witness to live to witness this day that we are going to the Afghan and um, we as the veterans we tried all generation tried but these are the young guys who did it for us and we are proud to be part of it and we are proud of them and um, this is something I um, I don't I don't know what what kind of feeling I can say is it's, it's too special for me are you foreseeing Gambia being regulars in the Afghans? Um, since we started going there, this is a must. It's not we, we cannot negotiate it anymore, and um, we have to be regular there and suit for the World Cup. That's that's the norm. It's no it's nothing um, we should accept other than Africa Cup permanent, then shooting for World Cup next. What advice do you have for the team? Um, the advice I have for them is that um, they go and um, accept to be underdogs because um, that's the norm. But um, when when uh, when you are underdog, you always have less pressure, and that will be advantage to Gambia, and that will be advantage to them. And um, that's all I'm telling them to do. All right, thank you so much. And um, I have something to add to this. Um, I have a group called the Veteran Support Group. And um, the ex-veterans all over the world, we come together, and um, every month we um, we contributed um, and donate. We contributed fifty thousand. No, we what we do is every month we s select ten to fifteen veterans from different disciplines, visit you, work, um, uh, um, uh, identify you, um, try to take your story because um, the problem is during our time there was no archives to gather some kind of archives so that um, we can in the future we can um, bring those things back to um, 
to the uh, media or whatever whenever we need them and um, when we um, every month when we visit them um, we so far well, let me just break it down um, for we did it for a year yes um, that was Sahandur Pap you know Sahandur very well uh, in his active days um, um, I mean, all these veterans were at State House uh, uh, two nights ago to join the president in, you know, bidding the Scorpions farewell to this very important assignment, and they've all given uh, their thoughts. You remember Shandur? How do you remember him? <laughs> brilliant player. Uh, he was a brilliant player, as I said. All these young boys. Uh, for many years, I used to travel with them, yeah. cover their matches. Yeah. Uh, they were very dedicated. What happened is uh, these young uh, gener uh, uh, people like Aziskor, yeah. Shahnur, and others, even by Mali, by Mali what? Yes, they sacrificed and did everything possible for Gambia to be qualified. But they were not fortunate. They were not fortunate. Yes, but uh, uh, in reality, uh, the commitment was there, yeah. the, the passion was there, and the love. Uh, unfortunately, they were not lucky uh, to be among. Yeah, <laughs> the president the of the GFF said yeah. that. Said that maybe they had some luck, but yeah. there are others who have tried their best. Yes, uh, I, I mean, and they couldn't uh, really achieve this dream. Okay. But all the same, they are more. They are equally important in the whole project. So yeah. now, we want to cross over to Cameroon because, uh, as you know. Yesterday, the national team and officials um, left the country um, to go to their base in the um, in Boya Town. The stadium, of course, is in Limbe, mm -hmm. but uh, the teams will stay. We understand in Boya Town, uh, part of the Anglophone uh, zone of Cameroon. And Babukar Kamara is the communications director of the GFA, the GFF, for that matter is with the team. Babukar, can you hear us loud and clear? Good. I don't know how, much, how audible uh, our technicians some training how they audible. Okay. First of all, can you describe the journey? How was it all since you uh, left town yesterday? So we left our hotel around 8 a.m. You know, where after nine we, you know, we started boarding. So the the flight eventually left the Bani International Airport at uh, around 11 o'clock, and uh, we arrived here at Douala International Airport at um, uh, you know 4 p.m. local time. That is uh, that would be 3 p.m. in in Banjul because this place is three hours ahead of Gambia. So when we get there to the hotel, uh, the, the airport, we went through all the you know, airport uh, protocols that is, you know, immigration here and here and there. So we saw our COVID-19 test results that we needed in the Gambia um, because this was done on, 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 on the day of the dinner. Mm -hmm. I think that was uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yes, it should be Thursday. Yeah. So the results came out on Friday morning. So that, that, that gave us an exemption. Uh, you know, to undergo any another COVID test here. What had we not done that test, we would have undergone another you know mandatory COVID testing. But because of that, they gave us uh, an exemption, so we did not you know do any COVID test. But uh, you know, we had some delays at uh, the airport uh, because uh, you know the luggage that we brought. I mean, we came with a lot of equipment. It's a whole tournament, so we came with uh, extra equipment so that uh, everything that we would need in this tournament. Uh, is here because I mean, who knows? Maybe we would be here until the seventh of February when we have to leave. Uh, yes. So uh, you know, yeah. So we did not have a you know vehicle to to to, to put in all our luggage. So that you know caused a delay of uh, you know I mean more than an hour and a half. But then eventually through the through the intervention of CAF, you know, we were given a truck uh, that came mm -hmm. for all the, the the luggage. But then because it was after six p.m. Mm -hmm. already uh, here. You know, they did not allow us, uh, I mean, we had a choice to travel at night, but we decided that, you know, we wanted to stay 
uh, through the intervention of CAF, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, that was what was recommended by CAF. So we get into the English-speaking part of the country during the night, mm -hmm. you know, because of all those security risks involved. Mm -hmm. So we, we spent the night at uh, a, a local hotel in Wala called Sawa Hotel. Mm -hmm. So this morning we left our hotel at 10 a.m. We spent the same in, uh, in the same hotel with, uh, with Mali, who are going to be our uh, in the second team. Mm. Minister also arrived, you know, about an hour after Gambia, but they decided to, to, to go to Limbe. They are based in Limbe uh, together with Mauritania. But here we are in Bawa, uh, Bawa Arada, with uh, Mali, and we are both uh, lodged at the same hotel. So we arrive here about mid the local time. Uh, we now flow or just from lunch. So in the next one and a half hour, we are going to depart uh, for training. The training ground also is somewhere around uh, Boya here, just about uh, 10 minutes drive from our hotel. Uh, we are going to hold our first training session at 4 p.m. local time. That's going to be 3 p.m. in Gambia. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, the next program on, on the list for the day is going to be dinner at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. After that, tomorrow we are going to have a double session, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So this is, has been the journey. It has been very, very tired, but at least now we are back. At, we have finally arrived at our base, and uh, here we have lodged at the Parliamentarian Flash Hotel here in Boa, the, like you said, uh, the English part of the country. Yes, thank you for that. Well, yeah, I was going to pick up the, you know, the security part of it. Um, you know, listening to the international media, talking about the restful nature of uh, that part of Cameroon. You know, there was a little bit of, you know, anxiety about the safety of our team. That's why I, it was good you started by describing how you get there. But what is the feeling among the locals there? Does, does it appear in any way that uh, they are anticipating a big festival, football festival for that matter? Indeed, I mean, I can tell you the, 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 the Afghan fever has already, uh, I mean, caught everyone here. Uh, uh, I mean, should I say, catch everyone here in, 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 in Cameroon? Because since our arrival uh, at the, you know, Duala International Airport, so you must have seen the videos. You would be amazed that, I mean, more than two people so were, you know, I mean, uh, Gambia, dressing, yes. Gambia, Gambia, and all those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, and, you know, two are the two of the delay, people were standing there. The airport waiting for us, so it took us about what five minutes or even more before we could already, I mean, actually get our way past to go to the hotel that we spent the night last night. And the whole city, also, I mean, the whole country, I can tell you, the feeling of Afcon, I mean, is 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 getting in definitely. When it comes to the, the issue of security, yes, I think there are you know a lot of concerns on the international media, and that has a. Uh, there are some sort of you know tension mm -hmm. among the, 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 the teams that are coming here. I mean, we were here, we didn't know what we were expecting. I know it is still very early for me to say, but I mean, also over, was exaggerated uh, mm -hmm. by, by the international media. That is the feeling that Cameroon uh, have. I mean, they believe that the, the, the Western world tried to keep it, uh, you know, postpone this, uh, this tournament. A little, but also to as a tournament, you know, in 2023 in, in, in Qatar. So, but I can tell you that we were escorted, um, uh, journey up here, escorted by military who were already, you know, I mean, there was one truck in front of us, that truck was, you know, behind our, 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 our caravan. Mm. And you know, once you get to the military everywhere, every few minutes, you see a military officer, mm. you know, I mean, ready for combat, you know, even on top of mountain, you see military officers standing everywhere and there are patrol teams everywhere. So I think the security here, uh, and uh, you know, it, it was smooth, smooth by force. So mm -hmm. too early to tell, but uh, the Cameroons have been very, very well in terms of any, you know, in any security eventualities that may, that may come up. Fantastic. And also, as I would say that, also, in, the, in front of our, 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 our hotel here, at the at the bacteria is post everywhere. Mm. Good. Uh, another worry, another thing that people are worried about might be the COVID protocols there. For example, I'm I'm thinking about how the testing with players would be. There are concerns that you know, uh, I mean, the testing may be so regular and so rigorous that there could be problems like players testing positive and then going to isolation that can decimates the number of players we may have for any given match since you arrive have you been familiarized with any 
you know, CAF's COVID-19 protocols as far as teams and officials testing is concerned? Yeah, I think I, I, I already mentioned that, uh, you know, in the introduction when I was speaking. That, yeah, uh, you didn't do that at the airport. The only thing we gave them here was our, 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 our test results that we came from, we began from, uh, Gambia. Uh, from Gambia. So once we gave them that, we are exempted. We are not tested. Yeah. Uh, we are allowed to go to our hotel and we are here before. But there are staff that I'm every member of the yeah, I'm talking about like what did they say will happen, you know, within the course of the tournament? Will the teams have to go on testing daily basis or before every match? No, it's, it is it is 48 hours every before every match. You mm. have to go for testing. Okay. And CAF also have brought in independent testers who are not uh, Cameroonians. Independent public health officials who are not who are not Cameroonian. Exactly. But, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I think, uh, you know, this is this I said they did to, to, to ensure that uh, they protect the integrity of, of, of the prison. So, what it was before every match, one would have to be tested. And even the fans that are going to enter the match as well, you have to get a vaccination card first. In fact, you're going to even enter in this country if you don't have a vaccination certificate. Mm -hmm. So, you have to be fully vaccinated. But at the same time, you have to test before every match. Now, I mean, uh, the, also, the, the feeling among Cameroonians is that, uh, I mean, they don't believe, just like Gambia, they don't believe that COVID exists in this country. They think COVID uh, thing is, is not a problem here. But then, according to them, again, they had to accept all those, you know, uh, regulations from CAF and, and the powers that may be behind them because they were trying to do everything to frustrate them so that this country is not going to host uh, the, 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 the competition. So, but they are going to accept that. So, but uh, those testings for the fans who are going to go into the stadiums, at whose cost is what I don't know. But for the delegation, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, 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 the teams, uh, is the Congress of African football that is responsible for everything. Fantastic. You know, there is a couple of uh, fans or other officials coming from Banjul on Monday. What would be your message to them? You've already described the protocols, both in Douala Airport and maybe the hotels. What would be your message to them? Well, I mean, uh, as, a, as a team, uh, as a national team, uh, I don't think the... the, 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 the um, this would be uh, in the same that uh, the national teams of all countries have been given VIP treatment. And the fans, I, I'm not sure of that. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, of course, you know that now you cannot vote any flight uh, without, without a COVID-19 exactly. uh, uh, vaccination card, mm -hmm. approve of it for that. And also, uh, you know, a test PCR negative test result of not more than 72 hours that has to be produced. Mm -hmm. I understand today the delegation that is coming on Monday is doing their, their COVID-19 testing today. Okay. So if anyone tests negative, well, I mean, I don't know what the protocol is involved as far as they are concerned. Because it's simply you know, we were coming, the message was that we were going to do the test mm -hmm. um, right on arrival. Mm -hmm. You understand? But I don't know whether they are also going to be for that. So even the vehicles that we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, I mean, uh, traveling with our own, you know, they are all VIP vehicles, diplomatic status have been given. So the protocols may be the same, different uh, for, for us and, and delegation as well. But, I mean, they prepare that they can be tested, but they can also be tested if they can prove a 72 hour, uh, was, uh, you know, negative PCR result. The other thing I want to ask is how are media facilities uh, there? Because Probably you and uh, some of our colleagues there might start working on filing reports home. How good, how qualitative is connection or facilities for media is so far the hotel area? Because you haven't been to the stadium yet. Well, at the hotel here, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry to say that I've not seen any any media facility yet. I know that uh, you know the internet connection at the at the hotel area is not the best. Uh, you know, there are different, different networks here, so, uh, but then the more you move, the more you have to switch internet connection, so sometimes that, you know, distracts a, a little, you understand, I'm even surprised that we were able to do this uh, interview like this, because when we came, mm -hmm. we were finding it very difficult to, to, to communicate uh, through WhatsApp and other, you know, and social media apps, so we a lot, and uh, hope there's improvement on that. As you said, the stadium then I get the feeling of that once we get to the, to the training ground play. I mean, you know, I mean, media arrangements and also in the TV, 
as a training as we go. The training ground is different from the stadium. Where we've been the market that the the little omni sport uh, you know sports stadium that's why we are going to play in, ma- in the, the, the matches and i understand here that also the temperature here in in in, in Bawa and limbe sometimes is a bit cool uh, you know, but uh in in limbe on the is it could be sometimes extremely hot like in in Bawa, was extremely hot yesterday when we arrived it was about 33 degrees in 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 in, in Bawa yesterday Fantastic. Well, I hope you have a great time in Boya Town. Actually, the town is very known to many Gambians, especially government officials from the community development. There is an institute there called Pan African Development Institute, paid. So many Gambians have gone through, especially people from the Cooperative Union and the community development. I'm sure you will chance upon Gambians there attending the course. They have no, I have no doubt about it when you have time to go around. Great for me uh, to meet, uh, you know, uh, Gambian counterparts here yeah. uh, in 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 Bawa. Seen a couple of them already. We came to the hotel in uh, like a couple of in. Good. Ten. Wow, uh, fantastic! Uh, Babakar Kamara, the director of marketing and communications at the Gambia Football Federation, already at uh, well. Yeah, already at base. Yes, go ahead. You want to say a few words? Yeah, hey, I was there, but the information we got was that also uh, since uh, the, the since the team started to to arrive in Cameroon here, Ghana was probably the welcome in terms of the numbers and and the atmosphere. You know, so in fact, anywhere we pass, you know, sometimes you know groups and even individuals want to see the Gambian ball. They were, you know, I mean, pushing their in air, you know, inter, you know, uh, sort of a support for us. So, I mean, the locals seem to be to be supporting us as well. I don't know what that, will, I mean, the reason of that maybe is because, I mean, we are underdogs and also these are made in appearance at the at the Afcons. So those call, all those could have contributed uh, to the kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the nice reception that we so far received from the locals here. And you know, one thing also you surprisingly may count, you are Anglophone, so are the locals. So, <laughs> unlike Mali, Tunisia, and Mauritania, you are Anglophone. Perhaps you'll get on well with the locals there, on that account alone. <laughs> Even the Franco, even the Francophone here yesterday, like I said, in Dual, and yeah. we make the Francophone out of the country. We usually also got some, some nice, you know, uh, 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 atmosphere there. Okay, fantastic. Babugar Kamara? Director of Marketing and Communications of the GFF, already based in uh, Boya Town, um, but the base for Group F in the African Nations Cup. Thank you very much, and we will be calling you up, disturbing you as the tournament progresses. Thank you very much for being with us here, Babagar. Thank you, too. Good. Yeah, he goes. Uh, Pop. <laughs> Guy Agana. You were following what he, he, he said about their arrival in Douala. They had to spend the night there. And they have heavy security that escorted them this morning uh, on their way to Weir Town uh, near Limbe, where the stadium is. Uh, and he said the locals have so far shown a lot of interest in there. And the Cameroonian authorities are adamant that everything will be uh, quite peaceful, even though he can understand that there are a lot of... Uh, security presence all, all over you know on top of mountains and around their hotels etc but generally so far so good the teams arrive and relaxed mm-hmm. yeah let's pray for the best mm-hmm. and wish our boys good luck mm-hmm. and uh, they should do everything possible to make sure mm-hmm. that uh, they will defend uh, the colors of the nation mm-hmm. in high heart good we will talk about um, the. We'll talk to yet another veteran uh, before we le- wrap up the program. And this time we go to the well, not necessarily veteran, <laughs> but um, somebody who's been involved in Gambian football also for a very long time. Coach Pa Samba Jao has been commentating on observing Gambian football for the last thirty years or so, and he is as passionate as everyone else. He was at the dinner farewell dinner that is for the scorpions and met our man landing cc okay uh could you please introduce yourself to us 
I am coach Pasamba Jau, a football enthusiast. Uh, I coached here in this country, first division zonals, and uh, most of the people who know me very well know me because of football. Even though now politics has taken over everything, but I am a football fanatic, a big supporter of uh, the Scorpions. Being a big supporter and football fanatic of this country, how do you feel about the Gambia's qualification to the AFCON for the first time in the country's history? Well, there is no greater honor than to see the Gambia qualify to the Cup of Nations in my lifetime because it is a dream that I've always had. Having uh, been in the game for over close to four decades now, I've always hoped that uh, one day I will witness the Gambia qualify. So to witness it to me is a big honor and a big privilege. My wish is for the Scorpions to do very well, and I have no doubt that we are going to do very well. And the reason for that is two things. First, every time we go to a tournament, we do very well. The second aspect of it is we are seen as an underdog. The Gambia has always been an underdog. And every time we are doubted, we come through. This is a country that was not, not supposed to be. When we wanted our independence, they thought that we were an improbable nation, that we could not survive on ourselves, we could not stand on our own. Here we are today. And by that concept, I believe that there is absolutely nothing, no amount of uh, distraction or difficulty that we cannot surmount. So I am very hopeful that we are going to do very well. And I wish that we will bring the trophy because there is nothing that is impossible. What message do you have for the players, like in form of advice? Uh, let them be themselves. Let them understand that they are great. They are great talent, and uh, they are strong people, and they will have the support and the backing of, the, of, the, of, of our nation. So let them go, let them play uh, for the red, white, blue, white, green, let them play for the country, and know that we will be behind them all to, uh, every step of the way. Thank you so much, Coach. Okay, uh, could you please? Uh, yeah, it's a very football, good day, man. Uh, welcome team. to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. After coach now, several teams in the Gambia. They want to have a cosmos, play a back and forth contract, why uh, problem with papers, what I want to lose. But why believe in Manchester very football, the league of Mangi, the trained former young players. Academy and along the west coast yeah. of Africa. I believe he football. Now, man, he man, he football. He did the million dollar. qualified for them. Afghan. How do you feel about this? No, no he qualified. No, no. From the Why? International man, play a like advice. Yeah. To face Lena, I'm going to work the focus. The tug of a war. Yes, I'm going we need from you defend Gambia. Let the new body get sucked now. Yakar, Yakar, Nampungi is your coffee. We pray the Nagis ne. President, we see Boba. Mo injika neka. Force supporter. For so halati ni Gambia ning suma ganau. The new red defender. It is so jugi sedek. New Yakar lad. To hell. So they may. Ning Fagis, Samoram Reglan, Nyapangi train, Fungo Gum Lingam, Bugoko, the foreign Neka, Ndam CEO, Sereo Tanala, eleven Biubul, Dugala, Fungo Redef Terra, Opera, the Samo Songor, Lukoid Bubuga, Ning Defco. This is this nak, this na si feel koi bi muna lawah ni defali. Sometimes, so far dem fake of a C, muna far dem fake of a C, fake of a D. You we ay nak play bi sabopa, you we ay try. Por kompi ay you we muna kabila. Danga gis ni danga nyu. In fact, football technique regla. Agress, so rest and relax, brain be rest, muscles be rest, so they may deliver. But if you go to the film, you can see 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 the
gambia yepp ngi ci gannaaw lolu ngay def sa mayen fo nga def wonders ma nga len di ñaanal nak fini dem nonu yalla lel yalla me len dam ñoon dam ñu def ndam ñep nega ci good health pare pour ñefé ñep ñu ngi seen gannaaw ñu nak vétéran jaar nañ ci am na ay ma nga len di ñaanal ñep di ñaanal ñep ku ñu jël yépp ak supporters yépp gambi yépp ñu ngi seen gannaaw thank you ay thanks could you please introduce yourself that was lamino ends i remember those days where commentators like papsen and solja used to say lamin lord of regbana <laughs> you know this man very well very well we are in kana unfortunately it was 1983 he is a central defender yes he, uh, the little match against uh, gambia was 2-0 uh, for the preliminary rounds of the african cup of nations and uh, unfortunately for him uh, he had uh, some injury some injury He he had been very one of the most popular mm. players in the national team mm. with those generations. So yeah, I remember yeah. when you people were commentating mm. him, Shol, yeah. you used to call him Lamin Lord of Rekban. Whatever yeah. you did with the ball was yeah. good. He must yeah. have been terribly good. Yes, yes, yes. He, he he had a trial with Cosmos in America, but he was not fortunate. Okay. Yes. Mm. But this time there were a lot of rivalries between Gambia and Senegal, and you followed both teams very well. Mm. We are all we are both in the African Nations Cup. Mm. <laughs> I mean different groups. Mm. But we are hoping uh, actually that we will progress and probably meet Senegal. Yeah. Senegal is this year they are favorites. Mm. But the team how do you see the chances of Senegal itself? <laughs> well, Cuz Algeria is there, Tunisia you talk about Cameroon themselves they are very ambitious the host. You know so, since 2018 according to the FIFA ranking they they are leading Senegal yeah they are leading in Africa mm -hmm. and uh, there's no changes which is very rare <laughs> to maintain the leadership for three years yes well uh, I hope and pray that uh, we'll pray and it's Senegal we affairs and hope and pray also for the best team to win <laughs> yes during those times when you have players like the Piri Piri in Malawi as you mentioned and you know Star Jalo and uh, others Laos Laos yes for the Laos was there and many others Senegal too had quite an impressive gallery of players like uh, I remember Lockhart yes uh, the late Joseph Koto mm. goalkeeper Sheikh Sheikh yes and and others how mm. was the rival they used to be when they come down to Banjo I remember the 19 80 football final zone 2 i was there was a small boy i was i was been raised mm. just to see i couldn't see much i only saw so many guys maybe you were there by him standing on top of some some elevated platform or something mm. yeah, but the commentary commentating how 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 did how did this, those fixtures look like gambia senegal at the time you know we are rivals yes. up to now Even of the no, <laughs> I, no, 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 I no. think I think now there is a big gap between us to be yeah. frank. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because, okay, until recently, yes, because I, I remember in the mid 2000s, you know, we, we, we almost played like equal. Yes, but they had players that were more exposed to you know, the like the like the Jews, the Bamboo Bajos, the Jews, and the Tambien, the Camara, and you know, all those all that was. But we, we, I remember. Three, we played, we drew them here, and even in 2006 we um, eliminated them. Then the World Cup and the, you know, and the African Nations Cup are combined. matched. Yes, combined, and we we had it. So um, let's hear from Captain Pamodu Jain. Um, he is the captain leading our national team in Cameroon right now. Pamodu spoke to Landing Sisi at the farewell dinner. Let's hear what he has to say. Good evening, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to extend our appreciation and thanks to Gambian for all this support. The Gambian fans have stood by us all. These years, it has been a long journey 
full of ups and downs. But Gambians have always stood by us. I would also like to extend our gratitude to the all former players from the Biri Biri generation to the present for all the works that they have put into the national team and a special thanks to the veterans from the support we have received today. Thank you, Mr. President, and your government for the support given to the Gambian Federation and my fellow brothers. To my teammates, who are my brothers, you are the Scorpions. I know how hardworking you all, and I know you are ready to go out and show the world what we can do. I am proud of you guys. You are my brothers, the coach, team, uh, the assistant, and all your staff. Thank you. We are all proud of you. Mr. President, we are all going to unite as a team the trophy to you. We will do our best to make the Gambians proud. Thank you all. May Allah make it easy for us. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend our appreciation and thanks to Gambian for all this support. The Gambian fans have stood by us all. These years, it has been a long journey, full of ups and downs. But Gambians have always stood by us. I would also like to extend our gratitude to the all former players from the Biri Biri generation to the present for all the works that they have put into the national team and a special thanks to the veterans from the support we have received today. Thank you, Mr. President, and your government for the support given to the Gambian. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Pablo Dujan, captain of the gallant scorpions already lodged in Buya Town in Cameroon, ready for battle um, against Mauritania on the 12th. January, but I've been joined by, uh, uh, well, another sports journalist guru, an apprentice to uh, Pap Sen. No, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, he just acknowledged that Tijan Masane, she said TMC, also covered uh, football and followed it religiously when he was both a student, a journalist, in fact, I should add, coach. So, Tijan, welcome. Thank you. The pleasure is mine being here this afternoon. Before you arrive, we've been going through the, you know, thoughts of veterans like uh, Alaji Mas Aksigay, as his core, Laminoen, Sehendur, and later to this generation. We still have Abdurrahman Kor, Boy Kor, to go, and the president. But Papsen have been doing a fantastic job giving us the history of the Nations Cup and the beginning of our participation. Those who first played for us, our struggles up to now. 
I want you to tell us, begin by telling us, how do you yourself feel, you know, Gambia participate in the Nations Cup for the first time? Well, <clears throat> first of all, there's a reason why I call Pap the walking encyclopedia. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the guy is just phenomenal. I've worked with him since my toddler years in the profession. Yeah. And he's pushed me and taught me a lot. And I'm always grateful to him. Of course, we've traveled many times covering the Gambia national team. Mm -hmm. And nobody does it like him. So every time I share a panel with him, it's been a long time though, we've not been on a panel. And people don't know this, Papa and I are the reason why the Gambian national team is called the Scorpions. We will come to that. Um, you know, why I wanted you. the man is a legend, yeah, man. Yeah. So. That's why I wanted you around <coughs> to, to so join him to tackle. He took he, us to the journey back and I can tell he was excited. Oh, I know. He, he, he got it from 1957 to date, like that. <laughs> um, of course, Pap may have gone through it. Um, We've had our share of the Cup of Nations. There were times that we were close. Um, I know Pap went through us beating Libya in Banjul, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was very close. And we lost in Tripoli. And also 83, Ghana, when we lost Laminoins to a Hesse Odamte. To a Hesse Odamte tackle. Uh -huh. That was a good year for Gambian football. And I can be on the record that that talent, could take on this talent today without a doubt. It was said there, I mean, Lamin <laughs> Bajo said, uh, gave a president that, look, we may have some luck with this new generation, but they are certainly where. Right, right. right. Perhaps we are more skillful. <clears throat> I said so. He right, said so. right. I, I don't know if Pap talked onto it, but there were struggles and limitations on what we could do, you know. Uh, they camped at the depot or finance, you talk about Yundum it. College finance. or Brikama and they slept on the floor and the resources were not there. So. We had coaches who would, you know, skip going so that a player can go. Mm. You know. Even they will they will they will they will give up their seat exactly. the plane so that the plane, uh, player Most can notably go. somebody in this and that was known for doing it all the time, Kebanjai Master. He would rather have a player go. Yeah. God bless his soul. Yeah, which is very different from now. Officials will English, <coughs> they will be on the plane and not. The and then you know you had the people that made the sacrifices. Yes. To he even he mentioned that. to even fly the team. Yeah, he mentioned. Like that. when we camped, like food wise, Obi Konate would provide mm -hmm. the fish. I said so. NPE, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> Usain Unjai, Babu so. Sise, James Gomez, Gabi Sose, so. Father Goff. You know, these were people that, quite frankly, were funding football. Absolutely. We, our sports budget was not like $400,000 is for all of sports. All of sports that can right. barely do anything. I could tell you, Pab, Pab had to pay himself, for himself, to cover games. Ah. <laughs> Obi or Usainu had to pay for me to travel with the national team. Yeah. Even when we called games back, the lines were paid for by, by Hussein MMJI. We mentioned before the advent of the FIFA subvention, now FIFA for what? Yeah, they, you know, there was no FIFA money coming. Yeah, so I think, you know, this tournament or this appearance yeah. should be dedicated to the forefathers. You know, as far as 1951 with B.O. Semega Jane, yeah. who also donated the first Gambian FA Cup, um, for all the struggles and what they put in place, you know, the Kotolui Proms, you know, who's the first groundskeeper for the FA, yeah. you know, SK O'Brien Coker and all those guys, what they did for the game, Durunjai Barracks, Barracks, the most, Barracks. the first recognized inter international FIFA reverie. He, there was a time he was ranked 15th in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. When we had the Cup of Nations in Libya. Yeah. So these are men that laid the foundation for today. For today. And uh, rightfully, you talked about Boy Corps. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> to this date, I've never seen anybody score three goals in 27 minutes. He's done it. He did that. <laughs> um, Malam Inbaji, yes. you know, Biri, yeah. you know. Um, th this is before Aziz score and Chenlul. You know, the national team that we had then, Pap said, can tell you, Pap was in Monrovia. Mm -hmm. When you had Saho at goal, yeah. AC Conte and Lamin Oins, Bilbaji and Komi Oins, 
Sheriff Job, Sheriff Uzar, Laos, Biri Ndaunyai, Esafai, Upfront, or Dalazi, or Salimong Nyasi. You know, there's not a better better team than we, that. We, we, we touched on something here that we, we talk about Senegal. I, I want to tell him that, okay, we are both in the Nations Cup, but today Senegal is ranked and in fact considered top favorites for the Cup, while we are seen as underdogs. But, yes. but you got to know this, Pap will tell you, <laughs> we can take Senegal on any day and play them to the last minute. Hmm. They, they beat us with <laughs> mind games and trash talking before the game. Yeah. Most of the time before games, our team loses. We lose our tempers for the things they tell us before the game, right, Pap? Eh, I'm in my you know, give me almuru, and then the boys get pissed, and there we go. We lose before we go into the game. But Mauritania, yeah. Yeah. we should have beat them in Mauritania, '83, when we won, when we when Baymale won the leading goal scorer, and I'm so sure too. Pap will also agree. There's only one person ever. That scored four goals against Guinea, and it's by Malawa ever in their football history. Yeah. When he hoisted the golden boot, in so that team was just Dudu Sen, Joe Tennis, Komi Owens, Sol Samba, yeah. you know Laos, yeah. Gabature, Bilbaji. Dude, that team was just so full of talent. Joe Sambu as he scored, mm -hmm. you know Louis Top, Ibrahim Adibowa, and we've come short. And I don't know how many times I've seen this man cry, but <laughs> I've seen him cry okay. a number of times. Yeah. Most notably when we were up against Sierra Leone 3 0. Yeah. And they came back to score two goals. That wasn't a happy day for you, Papa. I remember that. <laughs> now let's talk about the job at hand in in, 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 in in Cameroon these days. Of course, our country did not have the best of preparations. We are in we are in Qatar. We couldn't play Algeria and Syria in the friendly matches. They had to come back here in a hurry. Hot foot. They had to travel to um, Cameroon, uh, you know, to start preparation. We just been in Cameroon ourselves through telephone, and the Babacar told us that the team has arrived. They have to sleep in Douala though because there are concerns about security in that area where they are based, where town. Um, when you had concerns about security, Pap and uh, before we leave you, because we are taking too much of his time, I will remain with Tijan. Yeah. Ah, what were your concerns? Um, anytime security implications are at play, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's important to take notice. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, we, we are lucky that we have security minded people on our FA. Mm -hmm. A long time, long time, uh, yes. uh, one time. In, in fact, in fact, our first security, former security, GFF together, um, um, Jame has been has been named as security officer in the in the tournament. And yeah. of course, the president of the FA, FA GFF is a security, is a security man. man. So, I think it's a blessing for us, mm -hmm. and the fact that they've taken precautions. You know, to keep the boys in Douala is a good thing. Yeah, so that they will. You decide. know, you have there's a lot of things that go on around that yeah. area. So there are also the tournament has been held in a pandemic. Given what had happened to many teams actually, not only ours, um, do we have any fear that uh, uh, COVID issues could really, uh, I, I mean, affect our team or, or the whole tournament? We're talking about the whole tournament for that matter. Well, it's important that you raise this COVID issue. Yeah. Um, first of all, before I comment on what's going on in Cameroon, I think here as a nation, it's a responsibility and an obligation for every Gambian citizen yeah. to make sure that they mask up because it's spreading yeah. and it's rapidly spreading. And I know for a fact that a lot of people are not vaccinated. Yeah. And this is an appeal I'm making to the nation and all those out there who love me. Please well, mask up, and, mask and get up, vaccinated get already. vaccinated if you've not been vaccinated. Yeah. COVID is real. It's not a joke. It's serious. Now, going to your question, um, I think it may have implications on the tournament. I don't know how they're going to do the spectators. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, uh, Babu have just been telling us that, um, well, yeah, before you could go to a match, 48 hours before the match, you have to be tested if you are a player or an official. And he thinks, he's not sure, but of course the authorities in Cameroon have said that people going to the match must also have negative test results. So it's going to be a whole lot of... Uh, trouble and you know both for players officials and even fans i think it will be a logistical nightmare <laughs> you know just trying to get into that stadium um i don't know how they're going to do it i know in the states um it's the same thing with american football you need to test negative within 48 hours um it has worked well over there because stadium stadiums are filled to capacity I'm sure they might have touched base with different organizations that are holding activities on how to do it. You know, there have been, well, CAF and other African uh, football authorities call it conspiracy, that their European media, even today, Babuka repeated it, that the Cameroonians believe the European media are blowing things out of proportion, both the security and the COVID matter. There was a tournament <coughs> in Europe, they said, in 10, Africa, 10 European cities, the African, uh, I mean, the European Championship. It was in the middle of a pandemic. They are questioning why this hula balloon about Afghan in Cameroon in terms of COVID. Uh, do you, what school of thought do you belong to? Do you think CAF should have considered postponing this tournament? Um, that would be up for conjecture, really. <laughs> I don't think I'm in a position to say that. Uh. But Given the magnitude of the of the virus, mm. I would have thought about it. Mm. I certainly would have. I mean, given the capacity at continental level yeah. Yeah. that we have from a medical standpoint mm. and the response that uh, that is at hand, you know, I, if I was in a position of authority in CAF, I would have considered it, and I'm sure they probably did. And they went with their gut feeling that this is the best thing to do. Calf said they brought in a top-notch, I mean, pharmaceutical company called Unilab. They have a lab to be manned by independent specialists, independent, not Cameroonians. Because you know, of course, you know, <laughs> we had our trouble here when the Gabonese came and they did not believe that, uh, you know, they should be tested by, by our authorities and all, all that kind of thing. But CAF has given assurance that they are going to have an independent group that will test people and they believe their lab is one of the best. Every 48 hours before your match, you go through the test. So d does that in any way, you know, goes to allay fears that um, at least the test results would not be manufactured against one another just to disadvantage teams that have been a concern right? well if they brought in an independent lab that's credible i i'm all in for it mm -hmm. and i think it's for the safety of the players yeah. the officials and the spectators and i think it's a good move it's the way forward mm -hmm. because covid ain't going nowhere we we gotta we we, we gotta come to that consensus okay. as a globe that this is going to be part of the global village. Global, right. It's not going anywhere, not anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So we have to take all the precautions necessary yeah. to fight it, uh, hopefully eradicate it sometime. <laughs> but uh, as of now, yeah. with all these variants coming every three, two months, you yeah. know, yeah. it's not promising. It's not well, let's go back to the dinner. I mean, we have been making so many representing to the dinner. Uh, we are now with Abdurrahman Kor. You described, uh, you know, his three goals in 27 minutes, did he, didn't you? He is with Landing Sise in this short conversation uh, that we're gonna listen to beginning now. Please introduce yourself to oh. us. My name is Abdul Rahman Kor, uh, known as Boy Kor. But I'm too old now for people to call me boy now. I think they should start calling me Abdul Rahman Kaur. Why not Man Kaur? Uh, Man Kaur will be better, but still, <laughs> I think Abdul Rahman is even much more nicer than Boy Kaur. Actually, I'm an ex-national team player. Like veterans, like you know, see everybody around the table, we're veterans. 
been playing for the national team and at the same time I've been promoting Gambia tourism abroad because I live in Denmark. I mean Gambia means a lot to me. I see nothing but Gambia in front of me and I'm wishing the national team success and we're looking forward to see them lift the trophy in Cameroon. That's what our wishes are. We wish them good luck and then uh, we're expecting good results from them. How do you feel, you know, the day you receive information that, you know, Gambia qualified for AFCON for the first time in the country's history? <clears throat> I was, it was something very special. Like I said, you have good players around here. You have Sehandu. This guy, the guys who rolled the ball before even the Gambia qualified. But we have to give them the juice that and congratulate them for the job well done. I was very pleased, happy, and I'm happy to be part of it today to be here to see the president meet the president and thank the GFF for their effort they've done a fantastic job as well I mean I mean this is Gambia thanking everybody and really proud to be one of them to be here to be here to be here tonight and I'm happy to be a, a former national player this guy makes us proud and really really proud Thank you very much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Welcome back to the brunch live on Kerfatu. Special coverage of uh, the special coverage of the Africa Cup of Nations and Gambia's participation for the first time. We thank Pap Sen, a veteran journalist, sports journalist who've been with us in the morning, and welcome once again to our second guest, uh, Tijan Masani. He say himself a sports journalist guru coach who have been following football so that was abdul rahman koka i uh, call yes Kor. you've just been talking about him <laughs> amazing he said his generation tried their best but they are happy they're not jealous and you know, and you know they, they 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 presented two hundred thousand dollars to the present generation so they, they said they're not jealous i mean but they knew that this day will arrive and they are happy that they are alive and been invited to get involved in one way or the other. W what does he remind you, Abraham Koko? He reminds me of being the most powerful and most physically gifted striker in Gambian football. Mm -hmm. When you score 30 goals a season, mm -hmm. playing for Starlight, Starlight and Port Authority, mm -hmm. but he was more formidable when he played Starlight. And maybe this was because of the talent mm -hmm. he had behind him. Yeah. You know, Tony Joyner, Star Jallo, Charlie Boy, you know. But he was unstoppable. And he was good in the air, and uh, he could shoot with both legs. He could run, he was powerful, he had finesse. All the qualities mm -hmm. you want in a striker. Yeah. And in all my coverage of football at the time, mm -hmm. there, were, there were only three of them like that. Mm -hmm. Himself, Malamin Baji, and Biri. Yeah, Daunjai was a stud, but he was different. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. You see, the thing about them, during those times, most of the people who play for the national team are based here from our local leagues. Hardly any, except Biri perhaps, and maybe a few you can remember, we are playing abroad. These days, we have them constantly <coughs> based abroad. We virtually don't have a local player in the team. How does this tell you, you know, you know, being around, is this a, you know, a good omen for future progress, development of the football, country's football, or do you think this is definitely not the solution to our future development? First, it's the evolution. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I'll say a good old man. Okay. Now, and I don't think you, the sports journalists in this country, mm -hmm. get enough credit for that. Mm -hmm. But you people mm -hmm. are the guys that are selling these mm -hmm. wise. Mm -hmm. Because you guys are the people writing about them, mm -hmm. talking about them on television, showing their games. Yeah. The capacity is there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you 
come to our generation, maybe sports 100%, mm -hmm. only Papa and I mm -hmm. who are writing about football in this country. Yeah. He was in the Senegambia Sun, Sun, I was in the Gambia News Bulletin. Right. And we were not full-time sports journalists, by the way, right. you know. Yeah. <laughs> we had a uh, work cut out for us. To do, yes. So now the capacity is there, you know, we have sports journalists all over the country. As far back as Basse, Basse everywhere. you guys are reporting, talent, uh, that's the best way to identify talent. Yeah. Back then, if you wanted to identify talent from Basse, you had to drive over there, go to high level, watch yeah. a game. Yeah. But now you don't have to do that, plus yeah. technology. Yeah. Social media is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and it will continue to grow. We'll yeah. do a lot more mm -hmm. exports of yeah. talent yeah. around the world. Yeah because of sports journalists, mm -hmm. social media, mm -hmm. and technology. Good. I, I mean, I, I also mean, do you think we should rely on just foreign-based players, as how this team looks like? Uh, we virtually don't have local-based players in there. I know many African teams may look like that, but then, is that the solution? Um, I wouldn't think that's the solution. I would never agree because mm -hmm. if you remember, you and I covered the Gambia-Senegal game yeah. in 2003. Three and, six, yeah. and I think the best player on that team was Paco, yeah. the, 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 the sweeper. Yeah, right. And I was told he was a local base. Yeah, absolutely. Paco. He was the best player on that team and in, to me, he was the most talented and the smartest. And he was playing local. So I think we do have the local talent, and I think we could blend it together. You, you know, chemistry-wise, you, you, you better off when you have local players here. You know, the, the technicians will tell you that, yeah. because it's easier before you fly them out to Qatar. Qatar. You know, you could put them together here yes. and get them So yes, you, you touch a point that in we, were, we were discussing. Many people have questioned the wisdom, you know, behind assembling them in Qatar or any other place for these preparations when the tournament was going to be held in Africa. It would have been better, perhaps, logistically and perhaps for technical reasons to have <coughs> them in Banjul. Well, probably they can argue that it was... Maybe in hindsight, but you got to also remember that, you know, you have a very funny fan base. Yeah. You know, some would say, yeah, Take them to Qatar. Why aren't we taking our boys out yeah. for test, test, test matches? Yes. And then you know, so maybe also there are perhaps reasons like maybe very easy to have friendly matches in that arrangement than bringing them to the Gambia here, bringing foreign teams here. Even though we didn't eventually end up having no matches, but then probably it would have been easier for them. They, they can argue on, on on those lines. I think normally what happens, you know, you 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 can scout. Mm -hmm where teams are going to be, yeah. it's, easier. it's easier. Because to bring a team here, you know, the FA yeah, well, the FA pays. Yes, that's right. They, they respond but, you know, people, many people, because of the absence of the team from the Gambia, since they qualified March the 25th up to now, it was only two days ago, two nights ago, when people had the opportunity to see them again. They said this explains perhaps the lack of uh, uh, excitement, you know, uh, about the whole thing, you know, uh, like as opposed to if they have been here or having friendly matches here, the people would have been more connected to them and the atmosphere would have been more exciting in the build up to the tournament. <laughs> Did you feel there is an absence of excitement yourself when you returned from America and seeing that ah people are very quiet here? Or was it the election that distracted everybody? I would think that takes me to one of my lines when I was a commentator. Mm. I think Westfield would have been going bananas. <laughs> Just seeing those boys, you know, yeah. um, I think it should have been a very, it should have been a national fan fair sending them off, mm -hmm. given the importance and the magnitude of this tournament. Mm -hmm. um, the Gambia going to Afcon for the first time, I think the send off should have been more of a national, mm -hmm. more involvement of the fan base. Mm -hmm. You got to remember, it's the fan base, the thirty thousand people that go out there when the boys play. play. I think we should have found a way to get them involved in their send off really. Yeah. That would have, you know, <laughs> yeah. it would have generated more fanfare and, yeah. you know, more joy yeah. for the fans as the boys take off to 
to Yaoundé. Finally, our chance is against Tunisia, Mauritania, Mali. You have covered all these teams, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Pap has just told me, I'm, I mean, a team like Tunisia have been there more than 10 times, Mali mm -hmm. a couple of more times, mm -hmm. and Mauritania twice. How do you see our chances against Mauritania? Not the Mauritania of zone two days. L now. Let me say it again. Mm. It's the most important game in the history of Gambian football. Really? Period. The first match in the African Cup of Africa. Nations will be yes. the most important game in the history of so, Gambian so, football. So, so whatever anybody thinks about Tunisia and Mali, this first game right now will be more historical. Tunisia and Mali don't count. Mm. We need to go out there and beat Mauritania. I know Pap told you, we've beaten them millions of times. Yes. But it, it doesn't count. They, they play great football and they're a fast team. Now, what I've seen with our team, and I'm worried, mm -hmm. we kind of play defense and counter attack. Yeah, our, our, it's been said that our coach is more defense minded well, than offensive. I'm, I'm going to put on the record that strategy is not beating Mauritania. It's not going to beat Mauritania. No. But Mauritania play fast. Mm -hmm. They play very fast. That means we have to, our midfield needs to be at par with them to control that part of the field. Mm. Because that's where they generate most of their set plays. Most of their set plays are generated in the midfield. So we sh we're going to go out there and contain that midfield. We do have a solid defense with Omar Kohli anchoring that defense. If Job is behind on, in, in between the pipes, I'm not worried. Yeah. Okay, if he's between the pipes, I'm not worried. How about the front, our, our offensive uh, potential, Asan Sise and the... Uh, oh, Asan, uh, oh, Asan Sise is something else. Yeah. I mean, that guy is a gold machine. Okay. Okay. I, I have no doubt he's going to come through by the mercy. Steve is good. Beery's yeah, son has been... Yeah, he's, yeah. Oh, he's been rocking in Portugal. Yeah. So, I think we have the firepower up front. Our mm. midfield. Yeah, that's where you concerned. Angola outplayed us. We won that game, yeah, but, but they we in every department of the game. Ah, so mm. we need to go into Mauritania mm. ready from a mental standpoint. Mm. Like Sir Husar just said in an interview, mm -hmm. we have to be physical with that. We have to be physical. Mm. We don't play physical. Mm. We have to be very physical in this game, right? See. We're not gonna have to be thinking about am I going to get a stand or a bad munition here? Mm. Okay. We have to go out, be physical with them. They're not a physical team. Yeah, no, they're not. Yeah, no, okay. But they're a fast-paced team, and so is Mali mm -hmm. and Tunisia. Yeah. However, if we beat Mauritania, mm -hmm. the mindset, yes. the psychological aspect, yes. the, 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 the motivation, yes. we can go in there and we can beat Mali. We've beaten Mali before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in his own tools, yeah. and, um, and but you then know, of course you can agree. And you have to agree that Mali has evolved to be a powerhouse they are, they, in West Africa. Well, it's the investment, the investment, investment yeah. in the game, yeah. and the management. Mm. The, you know, their management is committed, you know, to the game, yeah. and it's the game that matters more, mm. and the national interest of the country is what is uppermost. Mm. I have a lot of friends that run Mali in football. I've been there many times. Yeah. And I'm kind of upset that their coach mm -hmm. made the comments yes. he made about our team. Our team yes. And I think that should be bulletin board material for the team. Yeah, and I hope Coach Senfa puts that up there before that game and say, tells the boys, this is what, what their coach said us. about you. Yeah. This is what that coach said about you. you. And I think that would pump the boys up also to go out there and play. Tunisia? Well, that's, that's a whole ball game that, different. That, well, you know what? Yeah. My boss Solja used to say, mm. and I'm going to quote him verbatim, mm. football is a game of equals. Mm. It's a game of equals. Yeah. You know, I, you know the, the boys, if they get out of the first two games, mm -hmm. let's say a win against Mauritania mm -hmm. and a tie against Mali, yeah, that's four points. They will be so motivated. They can shock the world. Mm -hmm. You know, who thought we were going to beat that, the, 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 you know, the Gabon. team with the Arsenal players, players. and all that? Gabon, who thought? Yeah, that's you know, who thought Fortune football team Whatever. was going to beat that Niger Algerian team the way they beat them here in Banjul? Yeah. 
So again, it goes back to what my mentor and teacher used to tell me, football is a game of equals. It's not a game of underdogs. It is a game of equals. And I have every confidence that these kids are going to go into Cameroon. They will pour every ounce of Gambian sweat and blood on that pitch for motherland dearest. They will do what they can with what they have. I, I do believe that deep down in my heart. And you know, there are, even, even, there are four other places for grabs, um, that is towards the second round, that is if you can, if you can be among the best, uh, the four best, uh, you know, uh, I mean, third place. Third place, yeah. So, so, so we have everything to play for. Oh, we have a lot to play for. Mm -hmm. I, you, I don't want to see, go, I'll be here, if Gambia beats Mauritania, you and I can do a live coverage out of Westfield, right? Absolutely. I'm taking you on that. <laughs> because that would be my show. It will be going be bananas. Yeah. <laughs> you see, Senegal can still forget the win over France in the World Cup. Because it was their first match. First World Cup, first match. Historic. So it's, so, so it's history. You're right. Yeah. I agree with you that match against Mauritania. It is the most important game in the life of Gambian football. Yeah. If we go in in there and yeah. beat Mauritania. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> it, it, oh, the, the boys are going to be so motivated. Absolutely. So let's hear now from the chief patron of the Gambia Football Federation, no other than President Adam Abaro. You know, at his farewell dinner, he gave some inspiring, um, you know, message, <laughs> delivered some inspiring <laughs> message to the boys. And uh, I'll cross over to our technical people to have us President Adam Baro at the farewell dinner. Our football ambassadors, the Scorpions, the Nalen Johbena Proverbs, Sarahule. I'm not team Johamne Gaindele. I'm not team Nyai. Nyun you to the Scorpions. Why Sarahule Nune? So they may say to G. Tangle. This is an other moment of joy and pride for me as head of state to be with our fabulous national football team, the Scorpions. For almost seven decades, our senior national football team is for the first time qualified to play in a major tournament. This is a huge achievement for which we renew our appreciations and thanks. <laughs> Set to kick off in Cameroon, on the 9th January 2022. Sitting Gambian president to see our national team <laughs> off on such a noble mission. The significance of football today goes way beyond its recognition and benefits as a mere sporting activity. Football is now a global phenomenon with many aspects. Aside from its contribution to maintaining good health, football strengthens a nation's human resource, bringing diverse people together, fostering social cohesion and bridging political divides. that football players and other sports personalities serve as ambassadors of international status is no longer an issue for anyone to contest. As Gambians, we must appreciate this fact and give more attention and support to sports and our sports celebrities. We have noticed that, in a way, 
the sports community tomorrow. We remain excited and look forward to their performance with keen interest. Our dear Scorpions, as our sports not only on the football pitch, but also wherever you may be, especially in the manner you conduct yourselves. We have confidence in you and believe that you will return to the Gambia after AFCON with your heads in sports. There is honor in participation depending on how Honorably, one participates. At the root of it all is the level of discipline we exhibit. We hope that this experience will inspire our youth further and pave the way for the Gambia to future more often in similar international tournaments. I encourage the team to do their best to make us proud as Gambians. Qualifying the country for its historic presence in AFCON demonstrate your strength, determination, and focus. Keep it up, the Scorpions, as a team. Supporting one and others as players, coaches, and officials to bring out the best in the team. I advise you, therefore, to keep that same team spirit with the common purpose of returning home victorious, the Scorpions. <laughs> Continue working together and keep the smiling course smiling. Be assured that my government will do its utmost to encourage you morally and support you financially so that your performance so that you perform to the best further to this i urge all gambians residents and friends of the gambia the business community and philanthropists to generously support the team for their effective participation in the tournament as we pray for the entire team's well-being and victory we bank on your patriotic goodwill, and thank you. Wow, President Adam Abaro at State House, when he hosted the national team to bid them farewell and hand over the battle flag, which he did, um, you know, uh, with those inspiring words, you had him. I mean, the team assured him that they will do their best. And then, you know, he said, well, I believe you continue with the determination and the cooperation you had and the unity you had in qualifying us, you will come home victorious. I hope, and I like that. Yeah. That's what a president does. That's, you know, he's the commander in chief. And, uh, and you know, like the University of the Gambia, the chief patron of football is the president. Every, every president that comes, the chief, Patron of Gambia football federation now is always the president. Indeed, I mean, as far back as I remember, of course, it was Sadaura. He would make it to every FA Cup final, and when we hosted Zone Two, yeah, final. No, he'd even come to the opening, okay, and yes, an opening I, I, I was very honoured, of course, in 1985. When Alaji Omar Barusi pushed me yeah. <laughs> to, to to write the draft, <laughs> you know, encouraged me and say you can do it. I remember that. Yeah. But you know, I think the president has spoken, and uh, I think he talked to them very passionately. Yeah. Um, after all, it's his team. Yeah. <laughs> it's the commander in chief. And, and, and significantly, <laughs> that night uh, he announced the government has uh, provided 90 million to you know, fill the funding gap that the NCC had been struggling with to, to raise the 117 million. Interestingly, after that, many companies, you know, executives who attended the dinner contributed. So 
Uh, they raised a lot of money. They ended up close to well over a dozen million dollars. Yeah, this is why we're that night. Yeah, now, Tijan, finally, take us back. You know, you were involved in the evolution of this national team, the Scorpions. How did we combine Scorpions? Well, <clears throat> you know, we played in the sub-region mostly. Of course, we've had a few games in North Africa and Morocco. And uh, most of these teams, if not all, have nicknames. Yes, of course. We, we had no nickname. We, Gambia 11. I Gambia know. 11, or the Groundhog Boys, they called us. They didn't like that one. Um, you had the Lone Stars in Liberia, the Leone Stars in Sierra Leone. Silly National, the yeah, Black Guinea. Stars, yeah. the, you know, the Elephants. Leopards. So, <laughs> like in Congo. 1984, around September, the FA, you know, came up with the idea that we need to get a name for the Gambia national team. Mm. And, uh, of course, Louis Antoine Jai, God bless his soul, oh, was the first female sports minister in this country. Yeah. So what we did um, from a media standpoint, Pap was working, of course, at Radio Seed. Yes, yes. Um, and... Uh, we made announcements and wrote on the Gambi News Bulletin, invited the public, the public, yeah. to send in names. Oh, yeah. So this name was not just selected by anybody. Uh, it was selected by the Gambian people. So when the names were tallied, mm -hmm. the name that dominated was Black Scorpions. Uh, now, for diplomatic reasons, we did not name the team Black Scorpions because Black Black Scorpions because if you follow the history of the Biafra War, yeah, the there was a general that referred to himself Ale as a Black Scorpion. Uh, there, there we go. There we go. So yeah, Alaji Sadauda being the consummate diplomat, when it went to cabinet, yeah. you know, the black was eliminated and that's how the Scorpions we got the name Scorpions. Mm. You know, I look back today there was a young girl that sent a name that was good, the Flying Doves, yeah. not the White Doves, okay. because the, what we had a pre-game ceremony at the national team. Yeah. Before every game, we assembled in the middle of the field and released the uh, dove. Oh, the doves. So, so they believed the, perhaps that... Well, it was nothing. They just did it. And then there is a young kid from, he was a student at Amitage High School, if I remember. Mm. He said, he wrote a, he wrote a paper that we should call the national team the Flying Fambondis. Oh, Fambondi. And he said, Fambondi mm -hmm. resonates with Gambian culture. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he went further to say, people already know about Fambondi because of the band. Uh, yes, they were based in Holland. Uh, have, in that case, we would have said the Super Eagles. We would have beaten Nigeria. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but that's how the name came about. It was a community involvement that Gambian sent in names. There were different names that came by man, man, for the Kaba 11. Ooh. Tell me about it. <laughs> so many names. And my boss at the time, my Sukai Mbai, now Mrs. Sukai Bojang. Okay. And Sukai and Swai Bukonate were on top of this on me all the time, mm -hmm. making sure that we were publishing it every the bulletin came out on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the time. Yeah. All the mails were coming to our Bedford Place building, and there was uh, uh, one of the big guns that time, Ali Usanyang. Yeah, he's still Gambia Information News he's Agency. Still, he's still and there. Ali would make sure he puts all the mails together for me yeah. and send it to my office at the Apollo Hotel Annex, so we'll publish it. And it was very interesting. Everybody was selling names. And then the team was unveiled on February 11th, mm -hmm. 1985. Mm -hmm. The first Scorpion 11. Mm -hmm. It was Sangdong at Gold, Paul Ogu, mm -hmm. Dudu Sen, mm -hmm. Babu Ture, Gaba Ture, Pamundao Gomez, Amadou Adams, Joe Tennis, mm -hmm. Sheikh Nur, Paul Gomez, and Aziz Kaur. We oh. lost to Cape Verde by two goals to one. Oh, now I remember that. And that goal was caught by Paul Gomez, Pelenjago. Oh. 
And when we went to State House the other day, there were two original Scorpions there, Aziz Kaur and Sendu. Both of them schoolboy internationals. Nice. In him I gave them yeah. many, many years ago. I know. Yeah, so how do you come by um, the Scorpions? In, in, eventually you pick, you, you all settled for the Scorpions. Well, yeah, but it made, it, it made sense because I remember Omar Amadou Jalo, people don't know, OJ, OJ, yeah. OJ is football crazy. Absolutely. You know, Kwame, Saho, uh, Laminoins, all those guys, uh, OJ Jalo's product oh. and Babu Karbaro. Now, I remember OJ explaining the, you know, uh, the mantra behind the Scorpions. Mm -hmm. Because I remember him telling us, um, you know, the Scorpion is small, just like the country. Yeah. And he said, this country is a proud country that doesn't go back. Go back. Like the Scorpion. He said, the Scorpion, when it stinks, it doesn't go back. you feel it. You feel it. So, no matter how giant. Yeah, uh, uh, exactly. Giant so, you. I think it made sense, you know, even though most teams with their nicknames, it, it kind of, it's tied to the country. Country, yeah, like, yeah it's a, it's, it depicts some sort of identity. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'll take the Scorpions mm -hmm. with the size of our country, yeah. because we are a very resolute nation. Yeah. And when we come together, we show the world mm -hmm. that what brings us together does, you know, far outweighs what divides us as Gambians. Good. We are one nation, indivisible under God. And, you know, every Gambian loves this country without a doubt. Good. So and we, with the Scorpions, from the, they took come from the Gambia 11, played very well in the Zone 2. That was the most uh, popular or common, biggest regional um, <coughs> championship in the region. We had thought that going to the Cup of Nations was going to be a, a fleeting illusion. <laughs> as Bob Marley said, that we will pursue but never attend. Most of our contemporaries in the region, if not all, in the Zone 2, made it to the African Nations Cup before us. Came around, even came back, get it with our others. Now that we've broken the jinx, we are there, finally. The bar has been raised. Do you think any football federation or executive or any coach who will ever live comfortably here when Gambia doesn't qualify for the Nations Cup from now on. <laughs> well, I'm not going to think about the next coach. I'm thinking about this coach right now. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. He has a lot of critics. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about this coach <laughs> right now. Okay. Because really, I've never seen the involvement mm -hmm. of the fans. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like when I covered Gambian football, mm -hmm. fans were not this crazy. Yes. You know, today, mm -hmm. The Gambian fans are numerous yeah. and every corner. They're very passionate. They are passionate. They love the team. Yeah. You know, they know the players. Mm -hmm. Back then, yes. you know, Box Bar Stadium took what? At best 10,000 people. 10, people. But so, then, the, but then the, 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 you know, passion. how many people had radios to yeah. listen to our commentaries? Yeah. Not too many. Now, today, mm -hmm. Gambian football is is way up there. You know, so this coach mm. and this FA, yeah. they they have the work cut out for them. <laughs> you know, you know what I've seen. Anything short of a great performance wow. before these fans will, is totally that'll, unacceptable. That'll of course, I you know. Yeah. So we just have to pray for them and support them, and it's a national duty they on. Mm. They went back on to Cameroon yeah. and give them all the support they need. Hopefully, the boys focused, disciplined, motivated. Mm -hmm. With 90 million, I think they're very motivated. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Money talks, doesn't well, it? Yes. I, you know, Pap said, well, I, I, well, I all, make it only more reason uh, I regret not having GFF officials. Yeah, but most of them have either gone to those who were supposed to go uh, either in Cameroon or busy arranging uh, the next delegation going on Monday. Papshen said he, he really surprised that not much has been said about $475,000 that CAF um, is to give or has given to all the teams, the 24 that qualified in Cameroon. He said not much said about it. Um, I, I think we, you know, we, we will we will start talking because you see, that's, just, that's a lot of millions. You see, I don't live here, so I try to stay away <laughs> from the numbers game, you know. <laughs> but anyway, that's a topic for another day. We, we, we will, of course, pursue that. 
So, um, I mean, this is Spin the Brunch, and we thank you very much for uh, following us. And our thanks goes to Pap Sen, our uh, Doyen, and of course, Tijan Masane Sise, who also uh, followed Gambian football, Gambian sports for that matter, you know, <laughs> when, he, you know when he was in his active years, even from, from school as a student uh, on the father. Goff, I'm sure you you won't live here without me. You mentioned him already, <laughs> Father Goff. <laughs> oh, I mean, so watch out. You know, televisions, Gambia Television has the right to broadcast um, the matches. All of them from uh, Cameroon. The Gambia will play Mauritania on the twelfth. That is Wednesday. We will be back. Uh, I think against Mali on the sixteenth and on the twentieth uh, against Tunisia. So. 12, 16, 20, yet January, don't miss that, because that's when Gambia will uh, have its group matches played. But as Tijan said, 12 January against Mauritania, you said that is... The most important game in the history of Gambian football. And I just think that we can call it from the backfield, Omar, Ture, Omar Kuri mounting up an assault. Mm -hmm leaves it for Sakhna in the midfield. The Gambia on the attack now. Yeah. He lays it to Paramosi. Paramosi puts past his man, lays the one. There we go, Asan Sise! <laughs> Hopefully it goes Let's that go. way. It goes that way. Hopefully. On Wednesday. Thank you very much, Tijan. And to all of you watching us from wherever you are, we'll be back next week. Perhaps after that goal has been scored and that three points have been secured. <laughs> Definitely. I, 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 you know, yeah. Lamin, I want to thank you. And thank you. you have been my understudy for many years. <laughs> yeah, uh, our first meeting in yeah, 1982. 83, 80, 80, was it? The 82. No. Eight, the, the, the youth national. Uh, it was Youth, youth Week. week uh, I was uh, calling a game, Banjul South, Banjul Central. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Lamin Cham. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be like you. I'll yes, never forget yes, that. Yes, yes. I love you to that, my brother. Thank love you. you. You're Thank good you at what you do. Yeah, thanks. Okay, we'll be back next week. Goodbye for now. data now even better enjoy 20% extra data on all gamsel data bundles buy 20 megabytes and get extra 4 megabytes buy 50 megabytes and get extra 10 megabytes buy 100 megabytes and get extra 20 megabytes any amount of gamsel data bundle you buy you will receive 20% extra data for free dial star 302 star data amount hash or go to your yai bottom menu and choose your data bundle now gamsel data is fast Last longer and very reliable. Gamsil Yaiborom. Planning to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond? Worry no more. Because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479. 9808483340-9400 or 6359906. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. 
Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.